Welcome to the Cambridge Financial Podcast with Bert Salazar, CEO at Cambridge Financial Partners, LLC. This podcast is all about tax-preferred retirement planning, economics, financial risk management, and achieving a risk-free and successful financial life. Now, your host, Bert Salazar. Bert Salazar. Hey, good day, everyone. Welcome to our podcast. I'm hoping that all of you are doing well and you're taking care of yourselves and your families and so forth. So once again, I'm excited to be here as I am every single week. Uh, This is episode 122 of your Tax-Free Life uh, podcast. So for those of you that are new joining us, uh, welcome and we're excited to have you here. So we've been doing this for almost three years now, so once again, um, I'm very proud of the fact that I have so many of you that continue to listen to my podcast every every single week, and that makes me humble because I appreciate a lot of the emails and the feedback and the phone calls that I get from uh, some of you every week. Uh, today's episode uh, is, are you a financial wolf or are you a financial sheep? And I'm going to go into a little bit of details as to what makes one uh, versus the other. But normally, when I visit uh, with clients for the first time, you know, there's a lot of information that I need to gather. You know, most of the business that I do with clients is online. So we normally set up a one-hour video conference call. Uh, Sometimes, you know, we go a little bit longer than that, but that's fine because at the end of the day, it's about them. It's about you, the client. Uh, not necessarily about me, but the more I get to know about you and your family and your goals and your objectives and the things that you have done in the past and the reasons, this is even more important, the reasons why you have made some of the decisions that you have made, uh, the better prepared I am going to be in order to try to get you from point A to point B in the most efficient and most effective manner uh, possible. So many of the questions that I ask um, are open-ended which means I, I require a response, and it's not, it's not a yes or no answer. You know, I want to make certain that I can get to know more and more about each individual I met, I meet, and each individual client, because at the end of the day, not only do they have to be a good fit for my, for my business and my firm, but I also need to be a good firm for them and a good, and a good fit for you as well. So if I'm not a good fit for you, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, that's not what I do. That's not my, you know, those are not my expertise. Uh, That's not my business model. And then obviously you have the right to go out and and find someone that can help you because at the end of the day, it should be about you and not about any one of us. Um, So normally when I engage clients on all these questions, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit now about, you know, what I consider to be the sheep method. You know, meaning that everyone is pretty much taking advantage of you and your family and your financial well-being because of all the decisions that you have made in the past. So, for instance, um, uh, under the SHEEP method, the IRS controls your financial life and pretty much dictates what you can or cannot do with your money. And the reason for that is that the vast majority of clients that I engage for the first time all of their money happen, happen to be in qualified plans. And because the money happens to be in qualified plans and the IRS is going to have full control of what you can or cannot do, you know, with those plans. They'll tell you, they'll tell you when you can have access and when you cannot. And they're going to be telling you what you need to do along those lines, whether you want to or not. So if you have a lot of your accounts uh, inside the IRS code, then chances are you're being controlled by the IRS in more ways than you can imagine. Now, another point um, uh, in the sheep method is that the, uh, the financial institutions uh, invade your financial accounts with multiple fees every single year. Now, all of us are going to have to pay fees at some point in time in the, or, or, or another, but at the end of the day, you want to reduce the amount of fees And if you're going to pay fees, you should know what you're paying the fees for and what kind of rate of return or internal rate of return are you receiving on on those fees, you know, for the benefit that you're getting. Many a times when I do um, an account review of um, uh, new clients, I realize that they're paying enormous amounts of fees and many of them did, did did not even know 
that they were paying those fees. Another major point under the sheep method is that financial institutions use your money to their advantage. The compounding effect works in their favor, uh, not on yours. And the reason for that is, you know, the, the financial institutions that are managing your accounts are going to make money on you, whether you make money, you lose money, or you break, or you break even. And by the same token, because of the compounding effect that many of these accounts are set up with, you know, if you don't know how to handle compounding accounts, then chances are uh, the, the financial institutions are, are going are gonna to be using your money uh, to their, uh, their advantage by leveraging every single dollar that you have inside of those accounts because you really haven't done your due diligence in understanding the difference between uh, compounding net and compounding compounding which is a major issue that I deal with when it comes to, to dealing with my clients. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in the next few minutes. Now, another major point here is that the IRS and financial institutions love your decision-making process. They really enjoy that. You know, 99% of Americans that I deal with have done, th- uh, have done um, uh, things and have made financial decisions in a certain manner. And a certain manner is, you know, one at a time, for different reasons, with different people, and under different sets of circumstances. So that brings about chaos. I remember when I was in the Marine Corps, there was something, a training program that we used to go through called Control Chaos. But in these types of uh, uh, financial institutions, they're the ones that are controlling the chaos and not you. And whenever somebody has the ability to control the chaos in a chaotic situation, chances are they're going to win the, the, the battle 100% of the time. So because of the fact that most uh, Americans make financial decisions one at a time for different reasons, with different people, and under different sets of circumstances, circumstances it basically means that there's no platform. Uh, there's no plan. There's no um, uh, motion plan as far as making financial decisions moving into the future. So therefore, anything that you're going to do is not going to be a benefit to you. It's going to be primarily a benefit to the IRS and the financial institutions that you're dealing with. Now, another great point uh, in the sheep method is that the IRS, financial institutions, and the government, they prey on your greed and lack of financial and economic education. See, most of us are greedy, and um, I remember um, uh, in the movie Wall Wall Street, uh, Gordon Gecko uh, said that greed, for lack of a better word, is good, or was good when he made that movie. But then again, the type of greed that I'm talking about is an internal greed that all of us have, because since we make all financial decisions what at a time, what at a, what at a time with different people and under different set of circumstances and for different reasons, then we really don't, um, don't give it any thought to the process and the economic process of those financial decisions. So because of that, uh, the IRS preys on that because they're going to have you uh, continuing to maximize your contributions to qualified plans and so forth, and they're going to win every single day of the, uh, of the week uh, because those accounts are going to be working for their benefit and not necessarily as much for yours. Now, another point here is that you allow the compounding effect of your financial accounts to grow under their management, and that goes back to the point of the compounding effect of financial accounts. If you have a financial account that is growing on a compounded basis, and you don't keep track of that compounding, and you don't diminish and or eliminate the compounding effect on those accounts, then chances are you're going to lose uh, the battle for your financial success. And the reason for that is that there are two types of compounding. You have the compounding effect that happens in a tax-deferred account, where as the money compounds, so does the tax liability, and so do the fees. So because of the fact that your money is compounding, now that's a good, that's a good thing on your side of the ledger. But on the other side of the ledger, you have a couple of things working against you. Uh, number one, that the taxes are also compounding. So as your money grows, so, so, so does the tax liability. And that has a negative impact 
on your account values at, uh, at you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years down the line. And the, and the second big issue there is that, you know, not only is the account compounding, but also the fees. So the higher your account value goes, and the higher the fees, because the fees are usually a percentage of the account value. And that's a win-win for the financial institutions and the government as well. Now, if you allow the compounding effect of your financial accounts to grow under their management, then don't blame anyone else by yourself. And, and, and the reason for all of this is that most of us make financial decisions on a whim. You know, we don't give it any thought. Uh, we follow the uh, someone next door is doing the same thing, so it's got to it's be good, so I'm going to do the same thing. You know, one of the questions that I ask many of my clients is, what made you decide to do this? Well, my next door neighbor is doing it, or my coworker was doing it, and I thought it was a good idea, and I went ahead and Googled some of the information, and I liked it, so I did it. But there was no rhyme or reason behind it, and when you don't have rhyme or reason behind it, chances are you're going to be making bad, deci- bad decisions. Another point uh, under the sheep method is that you max out all your tax-deferred accounts. So if you have 401ks, IRAs, 403bs, or whatever it may be, especially if you're uh, if you're receiving a match from your employer, you're, you're maxing out all your contributions. And when you're maxing out all those contributions, you're doing that because, you know, you want to you wanna save on taxes today. And you feel you're going to be saving on taxes, but you never save on taxes. All you're doing is you're postponing the tax, and when you postpone the tax, you also postpone the tax liability. And we all know where taxes are going go to be in the very near future. They're going to go a lot higher than they are today. Because otherwise, our country is going to have to go bankrupt. So you have to be able to understand the big difference between being a sheep or being a wolf from a financial standpoint. And the sooner you get to understand that, the better off you and your family are going to be in the future. Another sheep method here is that a lot of my clients, when they first come to see me, they, they have already bought term and... They say, well, you know, I've been trying to invest a difference, but I haven't been able to do it. So the buy term and invest a difference approach is one that is never, ever going to work on your favor. Because at the end of the day, you know, life insurance uh, term policies only pay 2.5% of the time. But the financial institutions are going fi- to charge you fees on your invest a difference whether you make money, lose money, or break even. And most of you, sadly enough, you're not going to be investing the difference. You're going to be spending the difference. So when you really start thinking about the sheep method, that is a method that most Americans have been following. I would argue most of you have been following a lot of these methods. And, I mean, obviously you have to take some responsibility for your actions, but lack of education plays a major role. And lack of economic education is paramount in why it is that you have made the decisions that you have made. So let's go ahead and and change this up and let's make it a paradigm shift. Let's go ahead and and think about the wolf method and what it is and what what are some of the uh, decisions that take you from being a sheep to being a wolf. And for those of you that are sheep today, you know, you still have time. But you need to make certain that you act upon it today because if you wait till tomorrow, the next week, or, you know, two weeks from now, you're going to forget and you're going to continue to be a financial sheep for the rest of your life. Now, whenever I do any type of um, uh, blueprint for clients when it comes to, to retirement planning or tax planning or debt elimination, which are the three areas that I specialize in, under the Wolf Method, You have total control of your financial well-being. You have a tactical retirement blueprint that oversees your economic process. Now, have any of you ever tried to play chess? I've played chess a few times. Not that I'm very good at it, but I have played chess. But let me ask you this. If you were asked to play chess without a chess board, how well do you think you will do? Well, it would be utterly impossible to play chess without a chess board. So the chess board that I provide to all my clients is my tactical retirement blueprint because my tactical retirement blueprint is going to take everything into consideration that we need to pay attention to, that you need to pay attention to 
in order to have a successful retirement life. Another point in reference to the Wolf, me wolf uh, Method is that you use the IRS self-created accounts to your benefit. So I'm not telling you that you shouldn't be putting money into your 401k, IRAs, and so forth, and 403bs. What I'm saying is that you have to have a tactical approach to putting those monies in there. You can be maxing out those contributions. You should always put money there, uh, put money there up to the match. And then anything above that, there are many things that you can do that are going to be a little bit more efficient or much more efficient than what you're doing inside of those plans. At the very worst, you should not contribute more than 7% of your gross income to any tax-deferred account because you have to consider what the tax liability may be in the future. Now, many employers today are offering not only traditional 401ks, but also Roth 401ks. And if you have the ability to put money into a Roth 401k, you know, then that would be icing on the cake. For some of you, it may make sense to make some contributions on the traditional side and some on the, on the Roth 401k side. For others that have a lot of money in the traditional side, then you should be making all your, your contributions to the Roth 401k side now, all depending on what your tax liability is today and where that tax liability may be in the near future. But these are decisions that you have to make and you have to look at them through a telescope, not through a microscope, because otherwise you're not going to be doing uh, the right thing and you're not going to be making the right decision uh, under the right circumstances. Now, under the Wolf Method, you manage the compounding effect of tax-deferred accounts. And one of, one of the tactical retirement blueprint uh, clauses that I put in there is that, you know, if you're making contributions and you're, north, uh, you're past the age of 59 and a half, it would be important as your account value grow, grows from one year to the next to take that money out or do a rollover of that money and put it into a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k because it's going to give you the ability to, uh, number one, level off the tax liability and instead of having the tax compounding, now is going to be a simple tax because, you know, you're just going to take the interest that it earned at the end of the year instead of allowing the interest to compound, and, there, and, there, and therefore the tax would also compound. But if you just take the interest out and put that interest into a Roth IRA, then the tax was a simple tax, but now the compounding effect inside of that Roth IRA will be compounding on a tax-free basis for the rest of your life, and that is the most optimal position that you would want to be when it comes to managing your retirement accounts, and that's important to note. Now, by, by doing certain things, you're going to be able to reduce the annual fees you pay and on, your, on your retirement accounts, and, and how do you do that? Well, you know, you can start using iShares uh, and or uh, indexes, in other words, investments that do not require a money manager, because once you require a money manager, then the fees are going to be much greater. And by the way, and this is uh, statistically speaking, you know, almost 85% uh, of all um, money managers never beat the indexes, meaning that you know if you invest in the S and P 500 or the Russell 2000 and you just invest in the index, which means that there is no money management, and you all allow the account to, uh, to go up or down depending on market conditions, uh, there's an 85% chance that you're going to do a lot better than somebody that was managing the account. Because not only the fees, but also the dragging of the excess fees of the money managers is going to make it even more challenging for those accounts to grow in value. So... You can reduce the annual fees by using either iShares or uh, indexes and many times even index annuity products because index annuity products actually charge a fee on the growth percentage of that account for that given year. So if your account grew from 100000 to 110000 in a given year inside an index annuity, you're paying fees on the 10000 not on the $110,000. So, you know, by doing that, then you're also reducing the... Uh, the fees uh, inside of those accounts as well. Another point in the Wolf Method is that, you know, you need to have a clear balance between uh, your taxable, your tax-deferred, and your tax-free bucket. 
And those are the three IRS uh, bucket codes that govern just about every financial decision that you're going to make in your life. Now, I know that many of you, under the sheep method, you know, you pay a lot of attention to asset allocation, making certain that you don't have all your eggs in one basket, and that's important to, to note, and that's important to do. But by the same token, you know, most mutual funds that, you'll f- that you find out there, they have many of the same stocks because there are more mutual funds out there than there are stocks. So therefore, you're going to have a repetition of stocks uh, in most mutual funds anyways. But not only do you need to pay attention to the asset allocation of where your money is invested, but you also need to pay attention to a tax allocation and know in which accounts your money is invested in. Is it a taxable bucket? Is it a tax-deferred bucket? Or is it a tax-free bucket? And do you have an optimum amount in each and every one of those buckets? And do you have such an optimum amount that is going to benefit you and your family for many, many years to come because it's going to reduce the compounding effect of your tax liability and it's also going to reduce uh, and or eliminate the taxation of your Social Security benefits and any potential increases in Medicare premium for you and your family in the future. Now, those of you that have been working with me for years and you're under the Wolf Method, Uh, You own permanent life insurance as in many different ways. Uh, You own it as asset protection. You own it as family protection. You own it as long-term care protection. And you own it as asset distribution maximization. See, when you truly understand the power of permanent life insurance, uh, you're not going to want to go without it because it's going to enhance so many other distributions uh, inside of your retirement platform that it's going to make your retirement platform a... It'll make a half a million dollar retirement plan f- platform feel like if it was worth a million dollars or if it was a million dollars like if it was worth two million dollars. Not only that, it's going to be protecting your assets at a point in time where you're going to need it most and it's going to be able to protect... Uh, your assets as well and your personal life in case of a long-term care need because many of these uh, permanent life insurance contracts today uh, contain uh, long-term care riders that can be utilized you know obviously as long as you can qualify for long-term care long-term care under IRS code which is basically the inability to perform two of the six activities of daily living and if you qualified under the IRS code then you're going to be able to use the leveraging of those accounts um, to avoid the additional expenses. Not to avoid them, because you're going to have to pay them anyways, but instead of having to drain your retirement accounts and, and to eventually disinherit your surviving spouse, then you're going to use the death benefit in the life insurance contract uh, to offset the additional ex- uh, expenses of your long-term care needs and is going to leave... Uh, your retirement accounts intact for your surviving spouse. See, all of those things are very, very critical, but, you know, when when you're a sheep or when you have done a financial sheep uh, calculation for most of your life, you're not going to know any of these things, and these are things that if you don't know them, they can actually kill you, and they will kill your family from a financial standpoint. Now, people that use the Wolf Method also realize that their financial decisions are not made in a vacuum. You know, therefore, uh, there's a rhyme and there's a reason for every financial decision that they make. So whenever they make a financial decision, and whenever we work together in making a financial decision, we open up the tactical retirement blueprint and we say, okay, where, where does that decision fit in the whole spectrum of this tactical retirement blueprint? And is it going to enhance the tactical retirement blueprint, or is it going to damage this tactical retirement blueprint that we have created for you and your family? And it will give you the ability to make that decision at that point in time. Another point in the Wolf Method is that you use money in motion techniques to reduce taxes and volatility, and I cover one of those. You know, there's a big difference between the compounding uh, of taxes versus the simple taxes. 
Now, I would argue that if I ask all of you, do you, ra do you prefer to have simple interest or compound interest, you're all going to say, obviously, compound interest. But if I ask if I ask you the same question and say, well, when it comes to taxes, would you would you rather have simple tax or compound tax? All of you are going to want simple tax. So at the end of the day, you want compound interest, but you only want simple tax. Well, unless you use money in motion techniques, you're not going to be able to accomplish both. You're going to be able to accomplish one or the other. So most of you, your money is compounding, but so is the tax liability and so are the fees. Well, by doing a proper tactical retirement blueprint, you will be able to reduce and or eliminate the compounding effect of taxes and fees on your retirement accounts. Another point of the, the Wolf uh, plan is that you use money motion techniques to increase your retirement income. And this is where life insurance plays a major role. Because your retirement assets cannot do all the things that they're supposed to. See, your retirement assets are supposed to provide a retirement income for you until the day you die because you don't want to, you don't, you, you don't want your money to die before you do. Not only does it need to provide an income until the day you die, it also has to provide an income to your surviving spouse until the day that he or she dies. It's also supposed to be compounding. Uh, because you want to make sure that these accounts are staying ahead of inflation because inflation is a silent killer and inflation is not tax deductible. And then these assets uh, have to be able to pay the tax liability, whatever it may be in the future, and produce sufficient, sufficient income to maintain your standard of living. And then if you happen to have a long-term care necessity in the future, it's supposed to be able to provide for that additional long-term care cost, not only for you, but also for your surviving spouse. As you can see, none of those accounts can do all of those things. No one can. There's no single account in the United States um, economic arsenal that would be able to do all of those things at the same time. So you have to be able to use the best tools that you have in the toolbox in order to uh, create straddles and combinations and use money motion techniques um, for you to be able to increase your retirement income, mitigate all of these other issues that I have just discussed, and still be very successful uh, in the future and throughout your retirement life. Another point here of the, of the Wolf uh, type of plan is that you max out your contributions to the Roth IRAs, Roth 401ks, municipal bonds up to a certain extent, and also your 7702 plans, which are your cash value life insurance plans. See, most of the people that are, are financial wolves, they're maxing out the contributions to those plans. They're not maxing out their contributions to their traditional IRAs and 401ks. They're maxing out all their contributions to their Roth IRAs, the Roth 401ks, the muni bonds, and the 7702 plans because they have a clear understanding of where taxes are going to be in the future. Many of the clients that I deal with that are wolves from a financial standpoint, they invest in real estate properties. And they do so to obviously to generate cash flow, but also to enhance tax deductions, exemptions, and credits under the IRS code. And that's not something that you can do in those traditional retirement accounts like traditional IRAs and 401ks and 403bs and pensions and so forth. So uh, the wolf obviously is so far ahead compared to a sheep, but you're going to be either on one side of the ladder or you're going to be uh, on the other. Either you're going to be a sheep or you're going to be a wolf. Now, people that think like wolves, they also have total protection against a fatal four of life. Because they don't want to be, uh, they don't like surprises, not even the good ones. So they're going to be protecting themselves and their families from the fatal four. And you obviously have heard me talk about this, you know, for the last uh, three years now. You know, the risk of dying too soon and the impact that they would have on your family. The risk of living too long and the fact that you may very well run out of money before you run out of life. The risk of living with a disability like long-term care where 75% of Americans, especially husband and wives, there's a 75% chance that one of them is going to have a need for long-term care. 
And how do you protect that and your assets and your surviving spouse from all that calamity? And then last but not least would be the risk of eroding factors like taxes, inflation, stock market volatility, interest rate volatility, propensity to consume, lawsuits, all of these things that can be a tremendous detriment to the well-being of your retirement accounts is something that uh, those of you that have the wolf attitude and the wolf planning approach uh, do it and, and protect it as well. And last but not least, those of you that have a wolf mentality, uh, you think and act as a wealthy American. You see, the wealthy are always thinking two to three generations down the line. Poor people are only thinking about Saturday night. And sadly enough, you know, 99% of Americans um, are going to remain poor for generations to come. I did a podcast on that last week, and I went into th some of the details for that. So if you have a wealthy mentality, and you don't have to be a multimillionaire for you to have a wealthy mentality, you just have to have that type of mentality that you understand what you know family values are, uh, family values are what a family unit is. You understand economic decisions. You understand you know taxation. Uh, you understand the fatal four, and you have a clear vision, uh, goal, and objective of what you want your life to be, not only for yourself and your surviving spouse, but also for your children, for your grandchildren, and for your great grandchildren. And those are very few of you that actually have that approach. But the more you try to benefit those down the line, the more you're going to be better benefiting yourself because you're going to be making the right decisions at the right time for the right reasons and under the right set of circumstances as opposed to the sheep meth method, which is the other, the, the, uh, the other way around. Now, you can't accomplish that by yourself. If you try to go to a financial advisor, most of the time, none of these advisors um, do any type of financial planning through a risk management approach. And that's my expertise. That's what I do, I do here in my firm uh, for each and every one of the clients that I engage. So I think it would be important for you to start thinking about putting together a tactical retirement blueprint. And you don't have to go check with your financial advisor because they won't know how to do this because they don't have the accounting background, they don't have the tax background, and they don't have, you know, the retirement dis distribution planning background that I have had over the past 30 years in order to, to be able to help you. Now, for those of you that may want to reach out to, you, to me, please feel free to call me. You can reach out to me at area code 786-766-1042. Once again, 786-766-1042. You can also send me an email at bert at bertsalazar.com. That would be B-E-R-T at B-E-R-T-S-A-L-A-Z-A-R.com. Again, bert at bertsalazar.com. And always remember that, you know, one of my major goals is that for my firm is, you know, we're changing financial lives uh, one client at a time. And the second goal is um, my goal for you and for your family as well, as I always say every single week, is to kind of change the way that you see things. Because when you change the way that you see things, the things that you see change. So once again, thank you for giving me a few minutes of your time today. Uh, stay safe. Uh, maintain your safe distance. Uh, wear a mask. And uh, I'll talk to you again next week. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.